Welcome to physics class with Flash Isaac. In my last video, I explained the meaning of physics. I explained the two things that the universe is made up of, which is matter and energy. You may want to go through that video to meet up with us. Today, I will be explaining quantities and units. Now, physical quantities have no meaning until they are quantified and given units. Quantified and given units. Now, if I should come to you and say, give me 5, give me 20, give me 15, it sounds somehow right, because it doesn't really make sense. 15 what? So by the time I add units, it makes sense to you. If you ask, okay, give me 15, I will be ready. Still doesn't make sense. Okay, give me 15 seconds. 15 seconds, I will be ready. So it makes sense now, right? So we have to quantify uh, physical quantities for them to make sense. Now in physics, we have two types of quantities. We have the fundamental quantities. And derived so you can do something like this or the reverse fundamental quantities or basic quantities are quantities that are independent of other quantities they are quantities that other quantities depend on they are quantities from which other quantities are gotten just keep that it may not make sense to you now, but trust me, it will start making sense to you as you progress. And at the end of the day, everything will make sense. Now, derived quantities are quantities that are gotten from fundamental quantities. They depend on the fundamental quantities to exist. And these fundamental quantities also, they have units. There are ways we measure the fundamental quantities in units and we also have derived units so derived units are gotten from fundamental units so let's say fundamental quantity quantity and units derived quantity and units derived quantity got guess it comes from fundamental quantity derived units comes from fundamental units so enough of the grammar let me give you something practical. The main fundamental quantities are time, time, length, and mass. So these are the three main fundamental quantities, and they have their units. The unit of time is second because a group of scientists gathered together to form a particular unit that will be suitable for solving for everybody all over the world to use so they gathered together and they formed the systemic international unit which is the SI unit so the SI unit of time is seconds the SI unit of length is meter m the si unit of mass is what kilogram you can put it here si unit quantities so these are the major fundamental quantities or the top three fundamental quantities so derived quantities get or come from fundamental quantities now you may be wondering how how do we get derived quantities from fundamental quantities and what are derived quantities now take a look at this so we said that the fundamental quantities are time length and mass and these are the units look at something velocity velocity is displacement over time so displacement over time and what is displacement 
distance. And what is distance? This is about length. How far or close things are. Then time is t, fundamental quantity. So therefore, velocity is simply distance m over time t s. So the and this velocity now it has gotten its oh uh, it, it it came from fundamental quantity which are these and the unit of velocity is meter per second because length is meter time is seconds which is m s over one meter per seconds so once we'll start solving dimension and main units you get it well okay good now there are other derived quantities like acceleration and so many more but before we go uh, into those ones let me list out other fundamental quantities so that you see them so these are the fundamental quantities time length mass temperature amount of substance luminous intensity and electric current the unit of temperature is kelvin si unit amount of substance is mo luminous intensity is candela can or C D electric current M. So these are fundamental quantities. We won't have much to discuss on them because they are the quantities in which other quantities are gotten. Fundamental units are units in which other units are gotten. That means these ones are on their own, they are constant. Why others depend on them? So now, let's see these derived quantities and how they get their units and how they are gotten from fundamental quantity. The first derived quantity I will talk about is volume. Volume. Now, take a look at volume. What is volume? Volume is simply length times breadth times height. L times B times H. That's volume. In other words, is L cube. That means length cube or distance cube. So what you can also say is M times M times M. Because volume is distance. Length is a distance. Breadth is a distance. Height is a distance. So volume is distance times distance times distance. Or volume is length times length times length. So m times m times m is equals m raised to power three. So volume is equals meter cube. So we've been able to derive volume from fundamental quantity. If you still don't understand that, take a look at density. Density is equals mass over volume now mass is a fundamental quantity we already seen it so kilogram and we just saw for volume volume is what meter cube so you can see that this density now is gotten from fundamental quantities combination of fundamental quantities and the unit of density is still gotten from fundamental quantities the units of the fundamental quantities kilogram uh, per meter cube so that's the unit of density kgm you see so these things are derived from fundamental quantities now let's see another one look at uh, area area is a derived quantity and what is area area is length times breadth which is the same thing as m times m because length is distance uh, breadth is distance 
So this is equals meter square. So derived quantity is derived from fundamental quantities, and the unit is also gotten from fundamental quantity. If this still doesn't make sense to you, let's look at another derived quantity and how it is derived. Acceleration. Acceleration is equals change in velocity over time. This is acceleration. And we solve velocity. So velocity is uh, distance over time which is already solved, that means everything here is now distance over time then over time again which is seconds so this is meter per seconds divided by seconds if you are changing this division to multiplication this will be meter per seconds times 1 over s which is m over s square m times 1 is m S times S is S square equals. So the unit of acceleration is meter per second square. It's a derived quantity, and you see everything here we've solved is gotten from fundamental quantities. You when you combine fundamental quantities and their units, you get derived quantities and units. Is it making sense? Okay. So let me write out the derived quantities and how they are derived and the unit just like i've already explained let me just bring it in a table So, uh, momentum. Momentum is mass times velocity, and mass is in kilogram. Uh, velocity is uh, distance over time, which is um, distance over time, m over t. And that's t is in seconds, time, seconds, meter per seconds. So, momentum is um, um, kilogram meter per second. That's the unit. Then, pressure is force over area. So, force is the same thing as force is ma force was ma m is kilogram mass times acceleration acceleration is changing velocity over time so which is v over time and velocity velocity over time and velocity is distance over time m over t over t and remember time is in seconds so this brings us to kilogram times m over s over s. So we have kilogram times m over s divided by s equals kilogram times m over s times 1 over s. This will give you kilogram meter over second square which is kilogram meter per second square so that's um force for you kilogram meter per second square so force has the same unit and derivation as weight now pressure is force over area and area is meter square so that means kilogram meter per second square and this other guy is meter square so this m cancels one m from here so this will give us kilogram per meter per second square for pressure and that is pascal or newton per uh, meter square okay so Energy. Energy is force times distance. So once you multiply force by distance m, yeah, in meter, 
that will give you kilogram meter square second square which is joule or newton seconds power is work over time so once you divide work over time you get power so that's how you get uh, you derive quantities from fundamental quantities so you've seen fundamental quantities and derived quantities so in summary we have two types of quantities in physics we have the fundamental quantities and we have the derived quantities the fundamental quantities are independent they don't depend on other quantities while derived quantities are gotten from fundamental quantities derived units are also gotten from fundamental units so check out my next video i'll explain dimensions and how to check whether an equation is correct we are giving thanks an equation, for watching to check whether it's correct to so use dimension to do all those things